yourself or you can type into the chat box. Cool, thank you. Uh, equipment you're gonna need today is the usual, a set of pencils or pens, preferably something that has letters or a brand name like a Sharpie or um, something that has a brand name with letters on it that you can see. We've been playing with those letters a little bit more. Uh, and then your letter ball or a ball shaped object of some sort, um, something that has a pattern or letters or numbers, something interesting for your eye to look at. Okay. And then just remember for this class, because we work the visual and vestibular system, um, that it's okay if you start to feel tired eyes, watery, itchy eyes, um, maybe even a little dizzy or nauseous. Um, that means that, sorry, we've got someone vacuuming outside of our apartment. It's very loud right now. Um, it means that you've met your edge and we don't want to go too far past your edge. So if you experience any of those things, take a break, close your eyes, grab some water and whatnot. Um, where are we? Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, the, the two pencils I was just <laughs> Um, some of Cynthia's favorites. <clears throat> they just have spaced out letters and numbers on them. Um, I got them from a workshop that I took several years ago, but <laughs> I love how we're calling them sticks. They do look like sticks. It's not really a pencil. I don't know how you would sharpen this. Um, anyway, <clears throat> yeah, but any kind of a pencil or pen with letters works just fine. <laughs> okay, great. All right, so let's come back to, uh, let me tilt this down, to a seated or standing grounded position of some sort. Okay, now let's just find a few shoulder circle rolls. Just coming into the body a bit more. Okay, we'll still the body. We'll close the eyes. And we'll just start by coming into your breath. Seeing if you can find a low belly breath. Slowing your breath down. Just breathing in and out of your nose. And let's just take a simple body scan here. We'll move from head to toes. And as we do the scan, I just want you to notice what parts of your body feel really good today. What parts of your body feel sticky or tight or maybe a bit uncomfortable. And then lastly, what parts of your body feel quiet? Like you can't sense them or you're not aware of those areas. So just starting from your head, noticing how your jaw is feeling, maybe wiggling the head around a little bit to notice how the neck feels today. And then how do the tops of the shoulders feel? The arms and the hands. And go ahead and wiggle any of these areas as you scan through them. The chest and the back. And then how does it feel to breathe into the low belly and to breathe into the low back? How do these two areas feel for you? Sticky, open, hard to sense. How do your hips feel? Your thighs, your calves and your feet. If you can feel the bottom of your feet on the floor, maybe give your toes a wiggle. 
And then set your intention for class today. Let's take one more inhale, one more exhale, and we'll open the eyes. Okay. We're going to take both arms and we're going to grab the elbows, framing our arms around our head. If that's hard for you to do, you can cross the arms over the chest also. Yeah. And let's just take a side bend to the left. And I want you to grab that elbow, uh, that right elbow to help you open up that side, give it a little extra tug. And then side bend to the right. And same thing, just give a little extra tug to that opposite elbow. Mm -hmm. Side bend left, take an inhale, exhale to center, side bend right. Inhale and exhale to center. Good, come back to the center. Go and find a roll down. We can leave the arms in this position here. We'll pause when we get to the bottom. And I want you to think of trying to breathe into your tailbone, into your sit bones. And then on your next exhale, we'll articulate back up. Arms will come back up overhead, framing the head. Yep. And then we're gonna dive slightly over to the left side of the body, articulating down. Take an inhale at the bottom and exhale, roll up. Good, rotate slightly to the right, same thing. Articulating down and then back up. Good. We'll bring both arms down, reaching the arms behind you or interlacing the fingers behind your back to open up the chest. And then we'll give the hands a shake. Great. Okay. Let's take the fingertips. We'll bring that just under the collarbone area to find those gentle taps there. Just tapping all along under the right collarbone, across the breastbone and over under the left collarbone. There we go. Good. And then you're going to come to your breastbone. So that bone, your sternum, that bone in the center of your chest. And I just want you to take your fingers or your fists and pull the tissue from the center out, from the center out. And just working your way down and up that bone. You might be able to feel your ribs and the tissue in between your ribs. Yeah, and just working your way. And I'm, I'm doing this kind of quickly, just pull and move, pull and move, pull and move. You can move slower if that feels good. This is an area that gets really restricted for a lot of people. If you're seated, if you're on the computer, if you're driving, if you're in a chair. Okay, good, shake the hands out. Yeah, let's work a little bit with the face today. So taking your fingernails or your knuckles, whatever you can, and let's find our full head scratch, hitting every inch of our scalp. We're gonna, we're gonna do something slightly different today. This is really good. I've talked about how we have fascia, connective tissue and muscles all over the head. So go ahead and relax. Um, and then we also have parts of our skull that join together in what's called sutures. It's basically the joints of our skull. So we're gonna find those and we're gonna massage those because it can sometimes help release some uh, tension through the neck, um, even the upper traps or the upper back, because everything is connected. 
<laughs> as we know by now. So I first want you to find, we're just gonna work on three of those joints, three of those sutures. So I want you to bring your fingertips to the side of your head. And you're, um, you're not quite at the crown of your head, but you're kind of at the side top of your head. And you'll feel, you should feel like a little, um, dent isn't the right word, well, uh, like a, a canyon, almost a really mini canyon there. And if you can see where I am, I'm kind of on, like if I were wearing a crown on my head, it's like where the crown would be sitting on my head. Okay, you can't really go wrong. If you're like, oh, I don't know if I'm in the right area, you're probably in the right area, so don't worry about it too much. And then I want you to take your fingers and move your fingers or your knuckles, and you can do one at a time if that's easier. Yeah, there you go. I want you to move your fingers in small circular movements. So we're moving more of the skin, the muscles and the fascia. So we're not scratching anymore. We're just mobilizing this area around the sutures. When we do our joint mobility warm up, um, this is no different. This is a joint, it's just in our skull. So it might be a little funny. Okay, I want you to release that, shake the hands out. We should have done this before, but let's just do this now. And I just want you to find a few head tilts from side to side. Yeah, and just notice if that feels different for you. Again, I know we didn't do this before, that suture release, but it's just nice to have a, an idea of what that's like for you. And then I want you to find a yes nod lifting the head, tucking the chin in. Okay, and then lastly, just find a full head and neck circle. Move slow through this one. If you've got hardware in your neck, move more from your rib cage. Okay, we're gonna do a couple more here. I want you to bring your hands to that bony point, oh, let me turn around, bony point on the back of your head. And we're gonna do kind of this whole general area. I want you to come below that bony point in the back of your head. And we're gonna start there. And we're gonna take our fingertips, same thing, just moving in small circles, massaging that area. This might be a really tender point for some of you. Yeah, I see some head nods. We have a lot of a muscle, uh, a lot of muscle attachments in this area that basically help hold our head up. So all of the muscles in the back of our head, a lot of those muscles attach here. Okay, I want you to keep doing this. We're gonna bring some eye movements into this. So massaging that area, find something to the left of you and to the right of you. And I want you to dart your eyes back and forth. Make it specific. So something very specific for your eyes to look at. Quickly moving your eyes from one side to the next. Um, for folks who are blind or visually impaired, you can just relax for this one. I don't want you doing head movements. I just want you focusing on that massage. I know I usually have you doing head movements when we're doing eye movements, but let's just stay with this. Shake the hands out, okay? And then just do that yes nod one more time. See if anything changed for you. Okay. And then lastly, we're gonna come to that suture right on the top of the head. Oh, we forgot to do above the bump. That's okay. We'll do it next time. Let's come to the suture on the top of your head. So again, looking for maybe a little indentation and then finding that same either circular or back and forth movement with your hands. So this is in the very center of your head. Like if you were to draw a line up from between your eyes to the back of your head, that's where that suture would sit. And just mobilizing this area. And as you're doing this, you're also just taking note like, mm, okay, the top of my head, the tissue there feels tighter than the side of my head, or the back of my head feels more tender than the top of my head. Okay, so this is all important information.
Okay, and then give your hands a shake. Yeah. And then last time, just find a few head circles. And going the other direction. And I'm just curious for folks, just to get a reading here. Give me a thumbs up if you feel like this released tension or eased up some range of motion in your neck. A side thumb if it stayed about the same or a down thumb if it got worse. Yeah, Claudia, I got you. Okay, okay, cool. I see mainly thumbs up, maybe one side thumb. Awesome, thanks, Amanda. Yeah, yeah, cool. Okay, a good tool for you to have, right? Just a little bit of that self-release can go a long way. Okay, good. Let's take the arms up and around, just coming into some backwards arm circles here. Inhale up and exhale down. Good, let's do one more of those. And then back to the center. We'll come into the elbows and I'm gonna give you a couple of options here. So let's circle the hands around the elbows, nice big circles. For my standing athletes, if you wanna find some knee circles, circling the knees around the ankles, you can do that too. Good. And then coming to the wrists, I'm gonna have you make a fist if you're able to, and then straighten your arms out in front of you. And you're just gonna nod that fist up and down. If, you're, if you can't make a fist, the hands can just be open too, that's fine. And really exaggerating, maybe even holding for a couple of seconds up, holding for a couple of seconds down. And then for my standing athletes, you can be doing, let me point this down, the same thing, but with your ankles. So lifting the toes and then pointing the toes from either a standing or a seated position. Okay, for wrist people, now I want you to go side to side. So I have a fist, my palms are facing down and I'm moving my wrist towards my pinky, towards my thumb, towards my pinky, towards my thumb. Yeah, and then for standing athletes, doing the same thing with your ankle, swooping the ankle in, swooping the ankle out. making sure you're doing both ankles, both wrists. And then go ahead and shake all of that out. Good. Okay, let's just do a quick sweeping of our body. So just sweeping from your shoulder to your wrist a few times as if you were trying to get water off of your arm, doing the same thing on the other side. Doing that down your chest and your belly, down your back, and then down your legs, as far down your legs as you can safely reach here. Getting that water off. Okay. Let's finish with the hands and the feet. So we'll take the hands, we'll rub them together. Creating some heat. Good. And then let's find our bottle cap twisting. So twisting each finger back and forth five and six, five or six times. And then pinching the tip of the finger before moving on to the next finger. You can use your knuckles to do this if it's hard for you to grip each finger. It's okay if your knuckles pop as long as nothing hurts in there. Yep, and then doing the other hand once you've done that side. Okay. 
where you have a lot of meridians that start and stop in the tips of the fingers. And we also have a lot of um, points in here for um, like the brain, the eyes and the, and, the, and the vestibular system also. So we have some important things in the tips of our fingers, which is why I always tell you to pinch them. Okay, we'll move to the feet. For those of you that are able to access your feet, whether you're standing or seated, I want you to do the same thing. So just finding that bottle cap twist of the toe and pinching the toe with the tip before moving on to the next toe. For those of you where it's hard for you to reach the feet, if you can reach your ankles or your calves, I want you to massage going up from the ankles and the calves. So just dragging your hands up, pushing some of those fluids back up towards the heart. And if it's hard for you to reach your calves, you're gonna do the same thing, but on your thighs, pushing from your knees to your hips, oops, using your knuckles or your hands. Okay, so whatever you can reach there, however low you could go. If you're doing the toes, remember to give a pinch to the toes. And then we'll switch sides. Noticing if there's a difference between the two sides. Noticing if one toe maybe doesn't roll quite as easily as the next. Maybe noticing if one calf is more swollen or a different color than the other calf. Same thing with the thighs. Do the thighs feel different for you? And if your sensation in your lower body is hard to feel, this work is still important to do. Does it send any little shocks up through your body? If you're feeling it with your hands, do your hands sense a difference between the two sides? Okay, go ahead and give the hands a shake. And then I'm gonna have you grab your letter ball. Yeah. Okay. For those of you that have been playing letter ball with me for a while, I'm going to have you go right into it. Uh, just normal letter ball. And then I'm going to, I'm going to layer on as we, as we play. Um, I see we've got some new faces here. So I'm just going to describe how to play this game. By the way, if you don't have a letter ball, a rolled up pair of socks or something interesting for your eye to look at something with a pattern or something like that, um, a dog toy even, that'll do just fine. Okay, so you're holding that ball into your chest. You're gonna pull it away from you at any angle. And you're gonna look at the ball, say the first letter or number you see, pull it back into your chest. Pull the ball away from you at a different angle, say the first letter or number you see, pull it back in. Okay. Pull it away say the first letter and number you see, pull it back in. And you're just gonna continue moving that ball all around your body, above you, to the side, behind you, down low. So we're really challenging your eyes, we're challenging your body to reach in different places. But we're gonna challenge some other things in a moment here. If you're able to play catch with yourself, to make it a little bit harder, then you can play catch with yourself. So again, you're trying to throw that ball all the way around you at different angles, stopping the ball right where you catch it, saying the first letter number you see, and then continuing. What if we can't pinch? Oh, was that from earlier? Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, F with the hands. Sorry, this is backtracking a little bit. If you can't pinch the tips of your fingers, you can just rub them with your knuckle. 
just bringing even any any stimulation exactly exactly any extra stimulation to the tips of your fingers is a plus yeah 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 that's a good question okay so i'm going to layer on with our ball game here so we've been playing with the memory piece so i want you to when you catch the ball, so I'll give an example. I catch the ball seven, seven B, seven B eight, seven B eight W, seven B eight W B. Okay, let's go to five. So you'll remember how many letters that or numbers you've done for five, and then you're going to restart. Okay, so just bringing a bit of a memory component into this. If five feels too easy, do six, do seven, do 10. If five feels like, oh my God, I can't even remember what I ate for breakfast this morning, <laughs> guilty, uh, then only remember three numbers or only remember four numbers. Okay, so do whatever makes the most sense for you. Anywhere from three to six or seven numbers, say them out loud if you can. Make it hard for yourself. Remember, it's okay to not catch the ball. Missing the ball, making it so hard for yourself that you miss the ball is actually a good thing. It means you found your edge with your eye, your either your hand-eye coordination um, or just your eye coordination in general or your eye range of motion. Yeah, I'm just going to watch folks here for a little bit. Yeah, 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 May, that's good. That's good. And making sure your eyes, if you don't have letters or numbers on your ball or on your object, make sure that you're locking your eyes. Oops. <laughs> You're locking your eyes onto a part of the ball, a very particular part, and then throw it again. Lock your eyes onto a particular part, throw it again. And again, if this is feeling easy, increase how many numbers you're memorizing. <laughs> In fact, I would be curious if you, Maybe we'll do this after. I'll have people hold up how many numbers they can memorize. No pressure. Don't worry. It's not a competition. I'm, I'm just purely curious how this memory game is working for people. Let's do one more set of five throws wherever you're at. Yeah, nice, Lynn. That's good. Okay. When you're done with those five throws, go ahead and set the ball down. And then again, just out of curiosity, maybe hold up or feel free to type into the chat box if you'd like to share, no pressure. Um, how many numbers can you memorize? Okay, yeah, Anya, I see five. Yep, Kathy, six. May, six. Awesome. Lynn, six. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if you don't have letters or numbers, Vicky, that's totally fine. Barbara, seven. Yeah, okay, cool, cool. I just was curious where folks were at with that. That's really good. Those are some really good numbers. Cool, okay. Good, let's come into a little bit of spinal mobility so you can set the ball down. Let's bring hands to the hips. And let's start with just a simple flexion and extension here. So I want you to round the spine, tuck the tail under, and then lift the spine, pull everything forward. Exhale to round and tuck, inhale to lift. If you're standing, you're doing the same thing, yep. Exhale round, inhale lift. Yeah, nice everybody. Round and lift. Let's do one more there. Mm -hmm. Good. And then we're going to find a rib translation. 
So translating the ribs to the left and to the right. Remember for this one, the pelvis stays steady. It's just the ribs gliding to the left and the right. Trying to keep the shoulders and the ribs parallel with the floor. Yeah. And now can we put all of those movements together and we'll find the big hula hooping of the ribs around the pelvis. Just starting moving in one direction. And then switching directions. Good, one more. And back to the center, awesome. Let's bring arms out into a T. We'll come into a side bend to the left. Right arm comes overhead. And then a side bend to the right. Good. Inhale to side bend. Exhale, center. Inhale, side bend. Exhale, center. Last one. Good, and then back to the center. Okay. Gonna have you grab your pencils here. Okay, yeah. Um, May, I'll, I'll explain the letter ball at the, I see your question in the chat. I'll explain how to make one of those or buy, you can also buy them. I'll, I'll explain that at the end of class. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's do some of our pencil. I like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I made mine. Mine is all sharpied. Um, okay, let's do some pencil push ups. So I'm going to have you hold. Remember, if you typically take your glasses off for this one, you could take your glasses off, but only take your glasses off if you can clearly see the pencil at an arm's distance in front of you. Yeah, folks that are blind or visually impaired, stay with me and I'll give you an alternative here in a moment. Okay, so holding that pencil arm's distance, we're going to go. <laughs> yeah, let me explain this first and Kathy, I'll, um, I'll answer that. You're gonna pull that pencil in between both of your eyes. Remember, if or when you start to see two pencils, pull the pencil away from your face. Pull the pencil in. When or if you start to see two pencils, pull it away. And I'm, I want you to look at a specific letter on that pencil. So like if you're holding a Sharpie, maybe you're looking at the S in Sharpie. Okay, so look at a very particular point on that letter. I want you to do 10 pencil push-ups, pulling the pencil in between the two eyes, 10 pencil push-ups, pulling the pencil up to the nose. Okay. Yeah, for folks that are blind or visually impaired, let's bring this to a yes nod and a no shake with your head. Um, if you are a standing athlete, try doing this standing, for actually for everybody, whether you're doing the head shakes or the pencil push-ups, try doing the standing. You could balance on a single leg or you can find your tight rope walking with one foot in front of the other. Okay, it just adds an extra challenge to the system. Yeah, I got a question. Is there something to help with the eye twitching? Um, yeah, you know, that's funny. That's, yeah, it's like something like that. I, I mean, unless you commonly get eye twitches is just telling me that that area is really being worked and it's maybe not used to it. Um, you could... Yeah, I, I don't really have anything. I, actually, I would maybe be curious if the pencil push-ups would help with the eye twitching. Um, it, yeah, eye twitches are, <laughs> it, they're, it's like kind of hard to massage that area. It's kind of hard to stretch that area. So sometimes just doing more eye exercises can help with it. Um, if it's really bugging you, close the eyes and just take a break. If it's not too bad, try to do some more of this stuff and um, yeah, we'll see if it goes away. But if it gets worse, maybe close the eyes. Mm 
Okay, yeah, just watching people here, making sure that head stays steady. Okay, okay, good. Go ahead and relax. I'm gonna have you take both of those pencils. We'll all do this one here. And you're gonna hold the pencils out into a T. Okay, so you're gonna turn your head and look at the left pencil. Again, I want you to find a specific letter on that pencil for your eyes to look at. And then you're gonna turn and rotate to the left. I stays on that pencil, hold for a breath, come back to the center, turn your head to the other pencil. Lock your eyes or your nose on a letter of that pencil, rotate, take an inhale, exhale back to the center, switch your eyes, switch your head, lock your eyes, rotate, breathe, back to the center and switch. And we're slowly gonna start to increase our speed here, rotate, center and switch. So your eyes are always locked on a letter as you rotate, rotate, center, switch, rotate, center, switch, rotate, center, switch. Yeah, so eyes will always go towards the pencil that's behind you when you're rotating. There you go, Kathy, look at that back pencil, yeah. Yeah, let's do three more. That's it, that's it, that's it. And notice the faster you move, the harder it gets for your eyes to stay focused on that pencil. When you've done those three, Yeah. Okay. When you've done those three, go ahead and just shake the arms out. We're going to do one more thing with the eyes and then we'll come back to more of a full body movement here. Okay. So holding the arms out into a T again, if your arms get tired, you can always bend your elbows in. <laughs> okay, good. Otherwise it's a good arm exercise. Okay. You're going to look to the pencil to your left. Actually, let's do this. Everyone bend your elbows in because I actually want that pencil to be really close to your face. Okay, look to your left. Look at a letter on that pencil and then we're gonna do our near, far, near, far. So find something beyond that pencil. I'm looking at a tree branch outside. I look to the pencil, tree, pencil, tree, pencil, tree. Turn my head, switch. Pencil, wall, pencil, wall, pencil, wall. Back and forth about eight times and then switch. Near, far, near, far, near, far, near, far, switch. Near, far, near, far, near, far, near, far, switch. And just continuing on with that. Okay, for folks who are blind or visually impaired, I'm gonna have you stay with the, ro with the rotation one. So you're gonna turn your head and neck towards that, um, left pencil and then rotate and then back to the center. Just stay with that one that we just did, but see if you can pick up your pace and move quicker to challenge your vestibular system a little bit more. Yeah, so Vicki, don't move the pencil, just hold the pencil still. And then you're looking at that pencil, jumping your eyes to something on the wall. Look at the pencil, jump your eyes to something behind it. Yeah, so your eyes are having to adjust. I'm looking 12 feet away from me. I'm looking one foot away from me. 12 feet away from me, one foot. Okay, yeah, you got it. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, Kathy, I just saw your response. Yeah, I, I don't know. That's a really good question. I don't have an answer. I would be curious if these, if these eye exercises help. Let me know if they do. Um, yeah, that's a good question. Okay, uh, maybe everybody just do one or two more total. Yeah, nice, Claudia, that's good. Okay. 
And then go ahead and set those pencils down when you're done. Okay, nice everyone. <laughs> A lot of eye work today. Let's just come into our swinging rotation. Tapping your low back if you can reach it. Yep, and if you can stand, allow the hips to move with you. Okay, and then coming back to the center. Good. Let's find our back stroke. One arm reaching behind you at a time. Standing athletes, if you wanna bring this into a march, you can do that too. Yeah, <laughs> I see backstroke and marching, that also works. <laughs> Love the creativity. I love this class so much because I look at all of your squares and most people are doing different variations. It's just like this whole screen of people, you know, adapting whatever the exercise I'm giving to you. It's, it's really awesome. You all have gotten really good at finding what works for your body. That's impressive. Okay, let's bring hands up to the sky one more time. Take an articulating roll down. Take an inhale at the bottom and then exhale to roll up. Okay, good. We're gonna come into just a little bit of patterned movement to challenge the coordination here. So we're gonna tap both of your hands to your head. So this is the first pattern. We're gonna tap the head we're gonna cross the shoulders, yep. And then we're gonna tap left hand to right knee, right hand to left knee. If you're standing, you can do a march. Okay, so let's just start with that. Tap the head, cross, switch the cross of the arms to tap the shoulders, hand to opposite knee, hand to opposite knee. But you're remembering which one crosses and we're gonna switch those every time. Hands to the back of the head, switch the cross to the shoulders. Hand to opposite knee, the other direction, hand to opposite knee. You know what I mean, yep. Tap the head, switch the cross to the shoulders. Hand to knee, hand to knee. Head, switch the shoulders, switch the knee cross and knee cross. Okay, once you have that pattern, you can pick up the pace, try to remember which direction the arms are crossed, which hand touches the knee first. And I want you switching every single time. The faster you go, the harder it gets. Okay, keep going. I'm just going to watch people here. Yeah, and if tapping the head is a little too hard, you can also just tap the shoulders or tap the collarbones if it's hard to reach your head. Okay, keep going. Can we sing the ABCDs? We're going to go for We're going to start by going forward. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Don't forget where you are with the tapping. Don't forget where you are with the alphabet. <laughs> yeah, keep going through the alphabet. Maybe do that once or twice more if you get to the end. Find a pace that challenges you. <laughs> okay if that feels easy do the alphabet backwards i'm not even going to say this one aloud because that would be embarrassing for me <laughs> but if that feels easy go backwards 
some head shakes. It's up to you. I'm not going to go backwards today. I'm going to stay with that alphabet going forward. Yeah. Maybe just do five or six more. Okay. And relax. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nice work, everybody. Good. Go and give everything a shake. You can shake the legs, the arms. Yeah, we'll bring the body to a still point. We'll close the eyes. Seeing if you can slow that breath down. And then finding that scan again, moving from your head down through your neck and your shoulders, your back and chest. Your belly and low back. And how are all these areas feeling? How do they feel different compared to the beginning of class? Through your hips and your legs, down into your feet. Go ahead and think of one thing you're grateful for today. Let's take one more inhale. One more exhale, and we'll open the eyes. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining, everyone.